and welcome back to my channel. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the TF Dream Factory God09, aka Movie Masterpiece Bone Crusher. Taking a quick look at the packaging, as you can see, you've got a silhouette image of Bone Crusher in his vehicle mode. 2018 Masterpiece God09, and that it is TF Dream Factory product. The other side of the packaging has a silhouette of Bone Crusher in his robot mode, or as they're calling him here, Steel Claw. The other side of the packaging, yet again, has another silhouette of Bone Crusher in his vehicle mode. And finally, the other side of the packaging has an upside down image of the same silhouette that we saw on the other side of the box. And here we have God09 Steel Claw, aka Movie Masterpiece Bone Crusher, out of his packaging. And as he comes packaged in his vehicle mode, now this is a fantastic recreation of that vehicle mode that we saw Bone Crusher obtain in the first movie. Now, obviously, as this is a third party product, it isn't actually official by Hasbro nor Takara, so they can't use the license and call him a Transformer nor can call him Bone Crusher. But we all know who this is. Taking a quick look at the details, as you can see, the side of the vehicle has been recreated fantastically. He is on six wheels with two faux wheels on either side of the vehicle. You've got the exhaust pipes which have been picked out in a really nice sculpted plastic with some singe burn effects at the end. As you can see, you've got some nice tampos throughout stating some nice statistics. We've got a really cool bulldog crushing some skulls with what seems to be this claw coming out of his mouth with the text bone crusher. The back, as you can see, you've got some red tail lights which are actually in red molded plastic with a stairwell that leads up to the top. This is actually detachable. However, we'll get more into that when we transform him into the robot mode. And overall, it's just a really nice representation of the character of Bone Crusher from the 2007 movie. Now, unfortunately, I am actually missing a piece. There should be another exhaust pipe that comes here and comes up. I have contacted the seller and he did say he will try and source that part for me. However, it's certainly not a massive drawback and doesn't really contribute much in the vehicle mode nor the robot mode. Turning the figure upwards, as you can see, you've got his massive mine detector at the top. This is what is obviously used to scrape the ground in order to detect the mines. It seems to have used this transparent, very reflective plastic for the windows, which I, is really nice to see. It definitely does give them a very authentic look. And overall, it's just a fantastic looking vehicle mode. All the tires are in fact rubber, so they do roll incredibly smoothly on the ground as you would expect. And he does have a fair amount of weight to him, despite the figure not actually obtaining any die cast. Now turning to this thing here, it is articulated on many, many joints. As you can see, you can really pose this up and get it scraping the ground. We did see him use this in the movie to flip some of the cars on the highway. So it is definitely nice to see how articulated this is. However, all the joints do play a larger role when in the robot mode. For a quick size comparison, unfortunately I don't have any of the MPM figures in their vehicle mode to hand. But here you can see him compared next to the Human Alliance Bumblebee, which is slightly larger than the MPM Bumblebee. And here he is next to the brand new Studio Series Deluxe Class. As you can see, he is an absolute massive piece and just completely dwarfs any of these figures. As you can see, he's significantly longer as well as taller than the Human Alliance Bumblebee. And when compared next to the Deluxe Class Studio Series Barricade, he is significantly bigger. I do think he's fantastic scale with some of the MPM figures. Figures. When I did have him, I did actually have the Masterpiece Optimus Prime transformed in his vehicle mode and they scaled really nice together. Now, turning to the transformation on this figure to start off with, you just want to remove some of the pieces. So these little exhaust stacks on the sides, they do just tab in, you just want to pull those off just like so. Turn the figure around and pull the other one off just like this. Then you would have to pull this off if I did have it here and then take the stairwell section and unpeg that as well. Come to this section here and pull those off. So you do pull off a significant amount of different pieces. However, nothing that is core to the main vehicle, as you can see, it still does look very reminiscent of what we see in the movie. So he doesn't pass form too much. Turning the figure on the underside now, we just want to remove his gun. So just take this section here and just pull it off and that will remove his gun. We'll get to this more when we get into the robot mode. Come to this section here and fold out this piece here. Take this whole section, it is on a double hinge and just swivel this all the way up just like so. This is more than likely going to get in the way, so just extend it and flop it down. What we then want to do is take these sections here and just pull them away from that tab on either side. We can then turn the figure around and lift these sections out. They are on ratchet joints, just like so. Turn the figure around now and we're going to want to detach this whole section. So just lift this whole section up, unpegging the wheels and just ratchet in them backwards on both sides. Pull them out just like this and then take these sections here fold them forwards and then that will free up the entirety of this section and then what we want to do is take this and collapse that in and then take this section and collapse that in and as you can see it does compress quite a fair amount take this whole section here and then just compress it just like so what we'll then want to do is take these six sections here and just untab them on either side, putting this piece down, repeat the same process, come here, just kind of untab all this section here, fold out these panels here, and on this side, 
take this whole armature section now and just pull it upwards. And then we're going to want to come to these legs and just pull them apart, pull that apart, which will then allow this whole piece here, which is actually held underneath here, to be risen up. As you can see, these sections here slide under this. So when you pull that apart, it does free this whole section up. Take this section here and just flop them upwards. And then take these pieces here and just fold them up against the buffalo sign. What you'll then want to do is come to this section. And as you can see there, there is a tab that slides into the slot. You just want to unpeg that and then lift this whole section upwards just like so and bring it around um, repeat the same process on this side so just ratchet that up take that section upwards you'll then want to come to this section here and pull this downwards which will then allow you to rotate this whole waist all the way around just like so turning your attention to these legs you want to ratchet these down take this section here fold out these red pieces and then just sit them up against this section so repeat the same process on this side ratchet that down ratchet those upwards we can then spray out these claws that will obviously become the base of his feet and then these wheels are actually on double joints so we're going to want to disengage them and just kind of ratchet those inwards so that they are more or less in the center of these two claw sections. Keep the same process on this side. What we now want to do is bring this whole section here backwards. They are on a variety of different hinge joints. So just try and fold those back as best as you can. As you can see, we've, uh, we have in fact exposed the head. Then take these and ratchet those in just like so. Now we're going to take this whole section here and actually bring this forwards, lift this piece out so that we can push the head in. You're then going to want to ratchet this section backwards and then fold these in and then they do just tab into place just like so. Now we want to take this, flip this upwards. Here we want to take this and bring that up so we can then take this and lift that up just to allow for some clearance take this piece here and fold this up and as you can see it will kind of lock the arms into place and just prevent that from completely flopping down that now done we can bring this all the way back and then as you can see there are some tabs there that will plug into the slots here just tab that section in just like so and there we more or less have the entire leg section of bone crusher fully completed we can now turn the figure around what we're then going to want to do is take these and as you can see there is a big slot there this tab here will plug into so just take that angle these sections backwards and that will snap into place just like so repeat the same process on this side what you'll then want to do is take these pieces here and just fold those as high up as possible as you can possibly get them as now we're going to take these sections here and attempt to plug them into here. So what I like to do is just angle these pieces out and fold this up just like so. And hopefully the arms will just tab into place just like so. Repeat the same process on this side. So just take it and snap it in just like that and ratchet the arms downwards. Believe it or not, we're actually very close to completing this. We're now going to want to take these pieces here and with them folded down, we can fold this down and lift this section up. So we're kind of creating shoulder pads for Bone Crusher. Fold this section up also. And come around to this side, repeat the same process. Start up, lift that section up. And now we're going to want to take this whole piece back, angle the wheels out of the way there on double joints. So just ratchet those backwards, hinge that back, and then that will give us clearance to move this entire structure. Now, there are a few tabs in here. As you can see, this is supposed to lock into this. And then this, here is actually supposed to lock into here. However, I have tried so many times and I cannot manage to do it whatsoever. So I tend to just take this whole section here and leave it resting on his back, just like so. It does hold reasonably well. Take this, fold that back, just like so. Take this whole claw section and hinge that back. Take this, spray these sections out. And then this hinge here, move that upwards also. Now this is where we actually take some faux claws. As you can see, these ones are significantly bigger than the ones that we saw in the vehicle mode. This is obviously to maximize accuracy. They do just plug onto these mushroom pegs, not entirely securely. They will just, they will more than likely pop off 
throughout the rest of the duration of the transformation, but I am rather pleased that they have actually included these in order to make the figure a lot more accurate. What we then want to do is come to the hands and just fold these pieces out. And the hands are on a series of joints. Just make sure that they all transform properly. And there we have TF Dream Factory Steel Claw, aka Movie Masterpiece Bone Crusher in his fantastic looking robot mode. Now, as you could probably tell from that transformation segment, this is an extremely complex and very well engineered transformation. It's definitely up there with the movie masterpiece quality in terms of transformation and definitely in terms of robot mode and vehicle mode accuracy. Giving you a very quick 360 on the figure, as you can see the detail that Dream Factory have put into this piece, it's absolutely fantastic. He's extremely faithful and very accurate to that design that we see Bone Crusher obtain in the first live action Transformers movie. Starting off with detail, as you can see, his head has been fantastically recreated. It is just mainly different colors of plastic, but it really does look really fantastic. As you can see, you've got the red pupils in there with some paint applications of the crest of this kind of brown burgundy type of plastic, which is extremely very accurate to what we see in the movie. There's some nice detailing within this whole brown section here to break up the sculpt and make it look really, really accurate. And Dream Factory have actually gone a step further and include LEDs into the figure to make him look more realistic. In order to obtain these, you just slide this section backwards and that is where the batteries are obtained. Now, as you can see, that tiny white switch is actually what turns on the lights. I like to use NPM swords in order to switch them on. So simply just switch them this side, close that section upwards, and there you've got Bone Crusher with his fantastic LED eyes. And don't they just look absolutely fantastic? It definitely does set him apart from the majority of third party companies that are making movie figures. He just looks so, so menacing. And there is actually some detailing in the eyes themselves. As you can see, you might be able to see there are a few different ridges in person, it definitely does look a lot, lot better than it is showing on camera. But I think that that is a really nice added touch and definitely gives this figure a presence that some of the movie masterpiece figures don't have. Moving down to the torso section, as you can see, there is just sculpted in detail everywhere on this figure. I really do think this is probably one of the most accurate recreations of a character that I've seen in figure form. As you can see, we do have a symbol here with a skull. I'm not entirely sure what that skull is supposed to replicate. You've got the words bone crusher and eradicate tampoed on either side with some nice paint applications. On the arms too, you've got some nice detailing here at the top. It says rear spare and then you've got reserve symbol there. And you've just got loads of different tech pieces of text printed all over the figure to make him extremely authentic and to carry over some of those traits that would actually appear on a real life vehicle. Moving down, as you can see, he's too fantastically detailed and I really like how they've actually replicated the wheels in the center of Bone Crush's feet, much like we saw in the movie. As you can see here, it says Revenge from Hell, and you've got some more tampos all the way throughout the figure. Turning him around, he does actually tidy up quite nicely. You do have this claw, which can compress quite a bit on the back, but that is accurate to what we see in the movie. And overall, it's just a fantastic looking piece, and it's definitely one of my favorite third party figures to date. Turning to the articulation on this figure, despite this being rather large and slightly bulky in certain areas, the articulation is not hindered whatsoever. The head is on a ball joint, so it can look upwards and downwards and also side to side. It can also twist left to right also. And due to the transformation hinge, you can get him looking upwards and downwards. Also, the arms are on ratchet joints, so they can ratchet forwards and backwards and also ratchet out to the sides, which is really nice to see. There is a rotation just above the elbow with a 90 degree bend there as well. The arms can actually extend, which I'm not entirely sure is accurate to the movie. However, this was a feature that we saw present on the deluxe class figure. So I definitely think that there is some accuracy behind it. As you can see, there are multiple joints here. So you can have him having these really spindly and very elongated arms. The hands are on several joints, so you can have them hinge forwards and backwards. Unfortunately, there is no wrist swivel, but the fingers have been detailed and articulated in a variety of different points. As you can see, the thumbs have got two points. They can hinge here as well as at the claw. The same for these sections here. They can hinge forwards and backwards and the claws can also pivot as well. Unfortunately, there is no form of waist articulation. However, the way this fig figure transforms, I think it's a miracle that they have actually put as much articulation as they actually have done. The legs are on ratchets, so they can kick forwards quite far as well as back all the way. They are on ratchets going outwards as well. They do have a swivel at the thigh as well as an over 90 degree bend at the knee, which is on a ratchet joint also. And unfortunately, there is no ankle pivot whatsoever. However, due to this complex design, it would have been very difficult to implement on the figure. So we do just have some different hinges at these claw pieces at the base of the feet. So overall for articulation for a third party and for a figure this complex, it's extremely well done. Now turning to one of the most signature aspects of Bone Crusher is this massive claw that we have on his back. Now this has got so many different hinge joints in it. In order to really get the full Bone Crusher look, 
you're going to want to ratchet this whole section up and flip this whole section forwards and then rotate the claws and there you have bone crusher with his fantastic elongated claw that we saw in the movie a really fantastic looking piece now turning to some accessories here are some pieces that come apart from the vehicle mode as you can see you've got the two exhaust pipes and the gun now that third exhaust piece that i showcased was missing from the figure does actually combine onto the gun which is why i really want to get my hands on it to complete the finished gun these other pieces such as the stairs and these other claw sections you just might as well leave them off to the side in order to actually recreate the gun as seen in the instructions as you can see there are some tabs here that you do just plug into some slots in the guns so just plug, plug them in just like so and i do believe that that third exhaust piece will plug onto the top to make this definitely a lot more steampunk look this isn't actually accurate to what we see in the film bone crusher never uses a gun in the one scene that he is in the movie however i definitely think that it is definitely a really nice way to deal with some of those leftover weapons that they just could not integrate into the figure in order to equip this into bone crusher's hand as you can see here there is a slot unfortunately the paint is coming off however i do probably believe that that is due to them using a cheap paint for this you actually want to get that slot and sandwich it in between the two fingers and then just wrap the claw around the gun just like so collapse these thumb sections down there is the gun equipped in bone crusher's hand and it is in there really really securely so that is definitely nice to see so i think that this is a really nice display option for bone crusher and definitely does look like a weapon that matches the aesthetic of this character if you wish to go with accuracy and you don't want the gun these pieces here do actually attach to the robot mode so as you can see here on the underside of his hand there are some slots there that these tabs will just plug into it definitely does complete the overall look of his arm as you no longer have that blank black space and it does look cool so this is probably more than likely the way that i'm going to display the figure with these sections in and with the gun just off to the side and the gun doesn't look too bad if you just want it plain it does look like a shotgun so you could still use it on the figure however if you're going for accuracy this is definitely the way you want to incorporate the extra parts for a quick Decepticon comparison, here I have the Dream Factory Bone Crusher compared to the official Takara MPM Barricade and the Wei Zhang Hide Shadow aka the Movie Masterpiece Black Hell. Please let me know down in the comment section below if you want to see a review of this. As you can see, I think that this is a fantastic lineup of Movie Masterpiece figures. I think that these two definitely scale really nicely with the official MPM Barricade and I just think the scale looks really really good. It's great that we're finally having some massive and extremely accurate Decepticons to go with our Movie Masterpiece Autobots. I think that this scale works perfectly. For a Movie Masterpiece Autobot comparison, here is Dream Factory Bone Crusher next to MPM Optimus Prime, Ironhide and Bumblebee. Personally, I think that this scale works really really well and as I stated earlier, this Bone Crusher is definitely a fantastic substitute for a movie masterpiece rendition of the character. For a closer comparison, here is MPM Optimus next to Bone Crusher, and I think that these two scale perfectly. This was definitely the scale that we saw in the movie, and Bone Crusher really should be taller, if not the same height as Optimus Prime, so this scale to me works perfectly. So there you have it, that is my review on the brand new Dream Factory God09 Steel Claw, aka Movie Masterpiece Bone Crusher. If you couldn't guess already, I'm extremely stoked by this figure. It is a really, really nice addition to my collection and is 100% the most accurate rendition of Bone Crusher that we've had in plastic form today. I definitely think that it will beat the upcoming Studio Series Voyager that I have ordered and on the way. In terms of scale, I think it scales perfectly with, with your movie masterpiece figures, not so much with your leader class, Voyager and Deluxe class. I think that the robot mode is really, really accurate. I think the vehicle mode is fantastic and the transformation, while rather complex, is genius and the fact that you can actually go from a really accurate looking vehicle mode to an equally accurate looking robot mode to me is just fantastic the price point on this figure is great as well he's significantly cheaper than the movie masterpiece Ironhide Optimus Prime and is more in keeping with the kind of price range that MPM Barricade and Bumblebee go for and considering this is a significantly large character with actual rubber tires and light up LED eyes I think that that is a fantastic bonus for this figure I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below. I highly recommend this purchase. I do have some studio series reviews coming up very soon. I've got the entire wave of new Voyagers, such as Optimus Prime and the Voyager Bone Crusher, as well as Leader Class, Jetfire and Dark of the Moon Megatron. So please subscribe to stay tuned for their reviews. I hope that you enjoyed this review and thanks for watching.